Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about the JVM version and which JVM version you should choose in Android Studio. So I'm specifically talking about this compile options block in your Gradle file and this Kotlin options block where the default is currently Java 1.8 so Java 8 and the JVM target for Kotlin is 1.8 as well. In this video, I will talk about what that even means, what this version refers to, and then I will answer what you should choose for that, because I'm pretty sure you had to deal with this version in Gradle before, since quite often build errors are actually related to exactly that field. So if you just create a new Android Studio project, you will see something like this, at least in 2023. On the one side, we do have a compile options block. Here we have a source compatibility field, which is set to Java version, version 1.8, and a target compatibility block, which is also set to the same version. And we also have an additional JVM target for Kotlin specifically, which is set to 1.8 as well. So does that refer to the Java version or what really is that? In order to understand these fields and what that really does, we first of all need to understand the difference between the Java version and the Java bytecode version. So when we build an app, we just write normal human readable code in form of Kotlin or Java code directly here in our files. So far so good, we can read this, we understand this, but as soon as we click run and we want to try out our app, what will happen behind the scenes is that the Java compiler will come around, which is part of the JDK, so the Java development kit, and it will take all that human readable code, either in Kotlin or Java, and convert that to non-human readable code, which we call bytecode. So on the one hand, we do have a Java version, and on the other hand, we have a Java bytecode version. The normal Java version just decides about the Java features, so the actual language features we can use in our app in our Java code. And in Kotlin, we do know that as well. The higher the Kotlin version we choose the more cool language features Kotlin actually introduces and we can use. For example, recently Kotlin introduced the so-called data objects, which are thing needs Kotlin 1.9.0. And before that, these just weren't available. And it's the same with the Java version. So the higher the Java version, the more language features we can use. But then we also have the Java bytecode version, which also evolves, but at a slower pace. So the Java bytecode version refers to how the actual bytecode looks like. So what our human readable code gets translated later too. And therefore newer Java bytecode versions may just introduce some new capabilities or optimizations for our code. But the bytecode version does not directly have something to do with the language features we can use in our app. So that means you can use Java bytecode version 18, for example, while not being able to use Java 18 features. So far, so good. That was just important to understand before we dive into these Gradle fields now. So on the one hand, we have this compile options block. This compile options block really only specifies options for the Java a compiler. On the other hand, these Kotlin options specify options for the Kotlin compiler. So if we have Kotlin code, and as you maybe know, in Android, we can mix Java and Kotlin code, which is why both these blocks may be needed. Then inside of this compile options block, we on the one hand have the source compatibility field, which sets the Java version of which we want to be able to use the language features, which is currently set to Java 8. And technically, you can set this to any Java version, but that does not directly mean that you can use these later Java features, because each Android version just supports up to a specific Java version. So the latest Android, which is 14 at the moment, supports up to Java 17 Java features, but only the core libraries of it, while Android 13, so one version before that, only supports up to Java 11. So you can choose anything here, but only the highest Java version, the corresponding Android version supports will be actually chosen. But then we do have this target compatibility as well. And that does not refer to the Java language features, but to the Java bytecode version. And, but then we also have this target compatibility field here, which does not refer to the Java language features we can use, but rather to the Java bytecode version that the Java compiler should generate. And that's exactly what I talked about before. So the bytecode version just determines how the code and the instructions look like that the Java compiler will generate after interpreting our human readable Java code. So again, you could set this to Java version um, 18, for example, which is currently the latest Java version. And in this case, this won't have any effect on the Java language features you can choose because it's really just about the bytecode version. So the bytecode might look differently, but usually this is also compatible with older bytecode. And then we also do have this Kotlin options block where we can set a JVM target, which is currently set to 1.8. 
This is exactly the same as this target compatibility, just that it refers to the Kotlin compiler. So since Kotlin and Java are interoperable, so they can work together, there is also bytecode that gets generated from Kotlin code. And that is what we can choose here. So this version will decide about the bytecode that gets generated from Kotlin files instead of Java files. And now many people ask me what you should now choose here. So the default is 1.8, which refers to Java 8. But as you can see, we can also set this to Java 18, for example. And this could be set to JVM target 18 as well. This would run just fine. However, generally, you can leave this at the default of Java 1.8, so Java 8. But sometimes you might experience that your app fails due to some kind of JVM conflict. And this can, for example, happen if you're using a library which targets a different JVM version than your app. So if the library might produce bytecode instructions that are not compatible with the bytecode instructions your app produces, then you might run into issues. But as I said, very often these are still compatible. So if a library introduces Java bytecode version 18 and your app has uh, Java bytecode version 8, then it's very likely that it's compatible, but does not necess necessarily mean that. So my personal rule of thumb is to use version 1.8 unless you actually run into issues whoops, with a library or you need to use Kotlin features that don't support Java 8, which they aren't really asked for now since the Kotlin team aims for broad compatibility. One more thing you might need to consider is the so-called Gradle JDK version, so an additional version, which is just the Java development kit version Gradle uses to build your app. That is independent of these compile options and Kotlin options, so you can just go to NRC your preferences um, here under settings, and then you can go to Gradle, and here under Gradle JDK, you need to choose the corresponding version because sometimes Android Studio Gradle complains here because uh, I think from Gradle 8 onwards, you need to use version 17 at least. So that is the place where you can choose that version. If we would choose something below here, um, like version 8, for example, and click OK, then you will notice that as soon as we run this, we will run into an issue because we are using a Gradle 8 and that is not compatible with that Gradle JDK. So you, you very often see this issue here that uh, no matching variant was found in older projects which still use the uh, Gradle JDK 8, but then updated to a Gradle 8 and therefore also need to update the Gradle JDK. So just open the settings, update this to at least 17, click OK, and then run this, and then you should also not get any further issues. Cool. And if you are an app developer and you regularly build apps, but you don't really feel confident about your way of building apps, you don't know if the way you code is right, you don't know if it's really done like that in the industry, and you just struggle to make your app scale and properly implement best practices, then maybe my mentorship program might be something for you, because in that program we will work together very closely, so you can get reviews on your individual coding style from a professional Android developer. If that sounds good to you, then apply by clicking the link down below. And other than that, thanks for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.